What's up everyone, it's White here today, making you guys a video going over how to do an LB7 Duramax high idle mod. This mod will work on 2001 to 2004 and a half LB7 Duramaxes, as long as the truck came factory equipped with cruise control. Without cruise control, this mod will not work. So before we get started, make sure your truck has factory cruise control. It is this lever here, so that you have the off, on, resume, and set options. All right, now that we've made sure the truck has factory cruise control, let's go ahead and go over what we're going to need to do this install. So to start off, we're going to need a test light. This test light is so that we can find a switched 12 volt power supply for our switch. We're going to need some side cutters, a crescent wrench for our switch, the nut on it, uh, some wire strippers and crimpers if you're using butt connectors, uh, a lighter to heat our heat shrink, some zip ties, a couple picks are going to be necessary. Uh, if you're a clean, neat freak about your wiring, you're going to want to get one of these adaptive fuses. It's the easiest way to grab a switched 12 volt power supply. What we're going to need next is this pin, this ECU pin, uh, and also about 8 or 9 feet of 18 to 20 gauge wire. Uh, you can pick up this pin at any of your local uh, GM dealers. Uh, I'll put the part number on the screen right now and also in the description, but you're going to need one of those pins. Um, if you're a neat freak about your wiring also, you're going to need some solder, a uh, thing of heat shrink, and a soldering iron. Um, also we're going to need a couple of ratchets. Uh, I have a 10 millimeter on here right now, and then in a quarter drive I have this set here. We're going to need a 7 millimeter there. Uh, we're also going to need a long pry bar or screwdriver, and don't forget your switch. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, to begin this install, let's go ahead and disconnect both negative battery terminals. Now that both of our negative battery terminals are disconnected, we're going to remove this cover for the TCM. These two bolts are just 10 millimeter bolts, and we're just removing this to get it up out of the way. Uh, this will give us more room to access the, T or the ECU and be easier to get the cover off. Alright, now that we got the TCM out of the way, uh, you can figure out a way to hold it up over there, but for now, I'm just going to leave it there. Now we have access to get down to the ECU itself. Um, what you're going to notice is there is a tab on the front and the back side of it. So for this tab over here, we're going to address this one second. So it's this tab right here, uh, kind of hard to see, but it's right there. And then the other tab is going to be right here on this back side. It's going to be right down in this hole. So what we're going to do is use our pry bar to pull those tabs off of there. All right, now that we got that loose, we'll go ahead and remove the ECU itself. So the easiest way to do this is, like I said, get this TCM out of the way. And then all you need to do is just finagle the cover up right on out of there. Easy as that. Next what we're going to do is getting down to the ECU. We're going to need a 7mm socket on our ratchet to remove both the ECU connectors. There's a center or a screw right in the center of the connectors. Uh, that's what you're going to need your 7mm wrench for and we'll pull those out and then the connectors will come out. Alright, now that we have both connectors loose, we're going to finagle them up in the engine bay to work on them. 
Uh, the easiest way to do this is grab hold of the main harness where these lead to that go into the fuse block and just pull up on it as that's where these go and then you can just sort of fiddle these around and pull these right on up here it's this blue connector that we're going to be working on so try and get this one up here as best you can like that is going to be perfect view for us to work on this uh, yours will have a gray connector on it which is what this tabs for but unfortunately mine's busted to shit so if you don't have it it's not that big of a deal um, if you do have it it comes off by just clamping down with some vice grips or something on these tabs that are here 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 and these two at the back and then that gray cover will just come off it's like the one that's on this connector here this gray connector and this back piece so that's what I'm missing but if you have it there's other videos on how to install a DSP5 switch that shows you how to get those off all right so at this point now that we have the connector up here we are going to move on to our switch install what you're gonna need now is your pick your ECU wire and ECU pin with wire already attached to it like so uh, what we're gonna start out by doing is taking our pick and on the front side of this connector well we'll start on the back so what you're going to see is numbers labeled here on the duramax trucks on the or on the lb7 we're looking for pin number 71 which is this pin right here you'll know it's 71 because 72 is blank has no wire in it and pin number 70 has a brown wire coming out of it so pin 71 what we're going to do is take our pick poke a hole through this rubber grommet all right now that that hole is poked we're going to go to the front side and remove this blue cover. So how you remove this is coming on this side here, you're gonna depress right here and pull the cover up a little bit and then you're gonna do it the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna have to do mine again because I accidentally reclipped it. So just like that, that cover comes off, we got our pins exposed, we're good to go from there. All right, with our pins exposed, we're gonna take our wire with our pin on it find our 71 slot that we already parked a hole, poked a hole in and insert our pin. So you're going to push it in all the way, you'll see it coming through and then it's going to go up and you're going to hear it click and that's where that little uh, catch is going to engage our pin so that it doesn't go nowhere. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and throw our cover back on because we are all set to go. These covers only go one way so don't worry about screwing them up. Just like that, we're done with our wire. Now back to reinstalling these in the ECU. Now go ahead and reinstall your ECU cover and TCM just the same way that you took it out. Now go ahead and route your wire into the firewall or into the cab, whatever way you please. I typically like to run my wire right here next to the fuse block and then there's a nice little grommet that I tapped into in the firewall to run stuff, run wires right into the cab. Alright now for the fun part, it is time to pick and choose where you want to draw power from for your switch. Uh, like I said earlier, you need a 12 volt switched power supply, so that means when the key is in the on position not when it's in the accessory position when it is in the on position so what you would use is a test light like this 
uh, you might want to do this before you disconnect the battery and all that stuff. Uh, what I do is just go right here. It's a good ground to connect your test light to. And then probe one of these fuses if you're going to use the add a fuse like I did. If not, that's still a good ground. You can probe whatever wires you want to run a scotch block into or a tap or whatever you want to do. But like I said, 12 volt switched. Make sure it's for the on position. All right, once you have found out where you're going to grab your power from, like I said, I recommend one of these add a fuses. They're super quick and easy. Plus, you get an inline fuse with 3 amps on it. Um, this is the best way to do this. Uh, I don't recommend just running a straight 12 volt source to this switch. And I don't recommend just grabbing an unfused link to this switch on switch power either. So these are great because it gives you an inline fuse. Uh, you can check or you can select whatever size fuse you want for these. You can pick them up at most hardware stores and they're cheap. So now that you have found where you're going to grab your 12 volt switch from, you're going to strip your end lead and figure out or put this in where you're going to grab your power from. So I'm going to grab mine from this fuse right here that is right up next to a 25 amp fuse on an O3 truck and right above the relay. It is a switched power supply so it will work for what we're doing. So I'm going to insert that there. I'll put on the screen right now a diagram of what this switch needs as far as power connections. What you're going to have is one that goes from the ECU to the switch and then you're going to have one that goes to the other side of the switch that's just a 12 volt power supply. Um, it doesn't need to be anything else, it's just a switch 12 volt power and then the wire that goes to your ECU. And I'll, like I said, I'll draw a little diagram on the screen right now showing you how that goes. And back to the truck. What I'm also going to be doing while I'm doing this is I have my gauges ran off this same lead and also the wire to turn on my radio. So I'm gonna be soldering three wires into this when you guys only need to solder one. Um, like I said, switch 12 volt, can't repeat that enough, make sure it's switched. And then I'm going to be wiring this one, and this one, and then our wire that goes to our switch. Alright, so now that we have our switch all wired in like it is here, we're going to insert our fuse, and get all these wires tucked back away where they belong. I'll put down in there. Alright, now we're going to insert our fuse. Okay, that's good to go there. Now we're going to work on running our wire, installing our switch, and hooking it all up, and then we will start the truck and show you guys it works. Alright, let's get on with removing the dash since that's going to be where I'm installing my switch. Now I'm going to be installing my switch right there in this janky drilled hole and running the wires out the back of it. So I have my switch in hand. What I'm going to do is take off my packing nut here and the face plate to tell me if it's on or off. Go ahead and pull those two off. With the backing nut you can go ahead and set the height you want. So I like mine just about there just so the switch doesn't look all goofy. Then you can go ahead and insert the switch like so and you'll have plenty of room to install it there. I'm going to run my wires up now, connect my wires before I can't get to them, and then we will finish installing this and put the truck back together. What you may end up having to do is pulling this cover off the underneath of the steering column. Uh, you might have to do this for a number of reasons, mainly just so that you can get to your wires. Alright, now that we have our purple wire, we can run that up to our switch as well. Again, kind of a pain in the butt, but we'll get it there. Alright, now we got both our wires up here, let's go ahead and wire them up. I'm going to snip this one to match, grab my wire strippers, go ahead and trim it down a little ways. Cool, cool. Take our switch, 
and a flathead screwdriver. Make sure both of our terminals are loose. And we'll go ahead and wire these up. Go ahead and put your 12 volt power supply on. And run your screw down tight to that. Now we'll run our switch wire. And put that onto the other terminal here. All right, we're good to go there. Now I'm gonna grab my little pod that we are installing our switch in. Go ahead, slap that in there and install your faceplate. Grab your crescent wrench and tighten her down. As you can see, it's off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate the switch a little. Cool, we are good to go from there. Now, since we got that all done, we'll reinsert our innards, running your wires through there and reconnecting our backing plate, making sure your fog or your dome light lines up. You'll hear it snap in. Go ahead and replug this in. You'll hear it snap. And go ahead and slide it back in its cubby. You'll need to finick around with the wires a little bit to get them all to go in there nice. But there you go. Switch is ready to go. And now we will reinstall our dash. All right, got everything picked up and put away. Let's fire the truck up, make sure she works. Oh, come on, damn shifter. All right. Fire her up. As you can see, our switch is disabled. Let's go ahead and flip it on. And there you have it. Cool, so there you guys have it, it works. Uh, just make sure when you're checking it and making sure it works, make sure it shuts off when the off switch is on or when it's selected to the off position. Otherwise, you're gonna have a short somewhere or it's getting power when it shouldn't be. Um, other than that, on the 2001 and 2002 trucks, I believe, it has three settings. So it'll be no high idle when the switch is on. This'll be like 850 RPM, this'll be like 1200, and this'll be like 1800. On the 2002 to 2004 and a half trucks, I believe, it only has the resume option and the set option, which sets it to about 1800 and, or 1200 and 1800, somewhere around there. All right, and that's all there is to it, guys. I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and give me a like on this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment with whatever you guys want to see more of. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this mod, and I will see you in the next one.